Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the liver, which is the topic of O level biology 5090. So the high yield points that you need to know regarding the liver for O level biology is the types of blood vessels which are connected to the liver and the functions of the liver. Let's discuss them one by one. So you need to know that there are three blood vessels which are connected to the liver. Two blood vessels take the blood to the liver, whereas one blood vessel takes the blood away from the liver. Let's discuss these blood vessels one by one. So the vessel I'm just labeling is known as the hepatic artery. You should know that all the blood vessels connected to the liver go by the name hepatic. Okay, so what do you need to know regarding the hepatic artery? Hepatic artery is the branch of aorta. As you all know about aorta, aorta is the largest artery of the body which carries oxygenated blood from the left ventricle of the heart to all the parts of the body. So aorta is also supplying the oxygenated blood to the liver via or through hepatic artery. So hepatic artery is the branch of aorta that carries oxygenated blood to the liver. carries oxygenated blood to the liver. Let's move on to the next blood vessel that is attached to the liver and carries blood to the liver. This one is known as the hepatic portal vein. Hepatic portal vein. So what do you need to know about this blood vessel? Hepatic portal vein carries blood from the small intestine to the liver. As you all know about the small intestine, small intestine is the site for the absorption of nutrients such as glucose, amino acids, vitamins, minerals, water. So in the hepatic portal vein, you will find highest concentration of glucose. You will find highest concentration of amino acids, highest concentration of minerals, highest concentration of vitamins. In short, we can say that the blood found in the hepatic portal vein is nutrient rich. Moreover, this blood is deoxygenated because the small intestine is using up oxygen in respiration. So let's write the important points regarding the hepatic portal vein. Number one contains highest concentration of glucose, contains highest concentration of glucose, What else contains nutrient rich blood? And contains deoxygenated blood. Okay, let's discuss about the third blood vessel that is connected to the liver. And this blood vessel basically takes the blood away from the liver. This is known as the hepatic vein. So what do you need to know about the hepatic vein? There are two important points regarding the hepatic vein. Number one is that hepatic vein carries deoxygenated blood away from the liver. Carries deoxygenated blood. away from the liver because the liver uses up oxygen. So the blood leaving the liver will be deoxygenated. Number two, that, that is the most important point regarding the hepatic vein is that it contains highest concentration of urea. Why is that so? Because as you all know that liver produces urea and whatever urea is produced in the liver leaves the liver via the hepatic vein. Let me give you an idea about the formation of urea. If we take or consume more proteins in diet than that are required by our body 
So what happens that those proteins are digested into amino acids and amino acids are absorbed in the small intestine. These amino acids circulate in the blood and are taken up by the cells of the body for use to synthesize proteins. So the body takes all the required amino acids from the blood and the remaining or excess amino acids are then broken down by the liver to form urea. Now let's discuss quickly the functions of the liver. So the main function of the liver is the maintenance or regulation of blood glucose concentration. How the liver does this is via the two hormones, insulin and glucagon. So let me tell you the situations in which these two hormones are released. When we consume any meal, that is rich in carbohydrates. So the blood glucose concentration rises and to control that, a hormone called insulin is secreted from the pancreas into the blood. The insulin goes to the liver and targets the liver. Insulin stimulates the liver to take up more glucose from the blood and convert it into glycogen. In this way, the blood glucose concentration falls back to the normal in the blood. In opposite cases, when we are not consuming any meal, or if we talk about between meals, between two meals, for example, we had a breakfast and then we had lunch. So uh, in between these two meals, obviously we are working, we are doing uh, different activities. So in that case, the blood glucose concentration falls. So which hormone maintains that blood glucose concentration, which is falling? The answer is glucagon. What glucagon does is that glucagon is also released by the pancreas into the blood and glucagon, glucagon stimulates the liver to convert stored glycogen back to glucose. The liver then releases this glucose into the blood. So as the blood glucose concentration is falling between the meals, because the liver is releasing the glucose into the blood, it will rise. The glucose concentration will rise back to normal. So I teach my students that you should write glucagon this way, glucagon. So by this way, you can remember that it has gone word in it. So glucagon is released when glucose is gone. Glucagon is released when glucose is gone, which means that when the glucose concentration, when the blood glucose concentration falls, glucagon is released. And when the blood glucose concentration rises, the insulin is released. So by this way, you can memorize that which hormone is released in which situation. The next function of the liver is detoxification. What is meant by detoxification? Detoxification is basically the conversion of the toxic substances into harmless substances. We can consume toxic substances or toxins in the food and these toxins can get absorbed via the small intestine into the blood. So the blood is taken to the liver and liver detoxifies any toxic substances or harmless or harmful chemicals into harmless substances. The third function of the liver is the deamination of excess amino acids to form urea. We just discussed that a uh, few minutes ago when I told you that liver produces urea, liver breaks down excess amino acids, or we can say deaminates excess amino acids to form urea. For examination point of view, you need to know the chemical elements found in the urea. So the formula of the urea is CONH2 taken twice. This shows that urea has four different chemical elements, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen and nitrogen and same elements are found in the amino acids. Okay, the next function of the liver is the production of bile. And as you all know that bile is involved in the emulsification of fats, which speeds up fat digestion. We will be discussing, we will be discussing this in the video regarding the digestive processes in gut. So you can watch this in detail. The next function of the liver is that liver stores vitamins and mineral ions. Okay, liver is also involved in the breakdown of drugs and hormones and liver synthesizes the plasma proteins. As you all know that the proteins found in the blood are known as the plasma proteins. Examples include the albumin, fibrinogen, prothrombin, and other various plasma proteins. All these plasma proteins are synthesized by the liver. Okay, 
So uh, this is a diagram taken from the paper. And this shows three blood vessels, which are connected to the liver. So let's label these one by one. So which one is C? C is hepatic artery. And how do I know that this vessel is the hepatic artery? Because we can see that C is coming from aorta. Uh, um, you can see that this is the left ventricle labeled over here. And the blood is ejecting from the left ventricle into the vessel B, that is the aorta. And aorta is giving its branch, that is C. So C is the hepatic artery that is taking blood to the liver. And this blood is oxygenated blood. What about D? So guys, D is hepatic portal vein because D is carrying the blood from the small intestine to the liver. And this blood, as you all know, has the highest concentration of glucose. This blood is nutrient rich and D oxygenated. What about F? The F is the blood vessel that is taking the blood away from the liver. And this is definitely hepatic vein. Hepatic vein is the blood vessel which has the highest concentration of urea because liver is the site where urea is produced. Okay, one more thing I would like to highlight is that the urea that is released from the liver eventually goes to the kidneys via which blood vessel? The renal artery. Kidney removes all, almost all the urea or we can say kidney excretes almost all the urea in urine so the blood leaving the kidney via the renal vein has the lowest concentration of urea. So examiner loves to test this, that which, which blood vessel contains the highest concentration of urea, that is the hepatic vein. And which blood vessel contains the lowest concentration of urea, the answer is the renal vein. Okay, that concludes our section on the liver. Thank you so much for watching.